Two-thirds of the games Bob announced were in the win column. The Rose Bowl statistic, however, is not an impressive one. Bo Schembecker always lost at the Rose Bowl, so it seems that year after year he'd go out there, they'd play well, Michigan, but they got beat. And this was always a bad way for the season and for Bob Ufer, because then he knew he had to carry all of that through the wintertime, despite all of his enthusiasm. The year, 1980. Michigan wants another crack at the roses this year after being out there on January 1st to 77, 78, again in 79, three losses in a row. And then to add insult to injury, the Wolverines lost at the Gator Bowl last December. The Wolverines were destined for greatness. They destroyed almost everyone in their path. The Big Ten season went like this. It's a touchdown, Carter! Anthony the Diner, Carter! Pulls Michigan from the brink of despair to the heights of ecstasy! Spartans battled Michigan to the very brink for losing 27-23. The Big Ten football game for the most coveted piece of football crockery in the world, the famed Little Brown Judge. And he catches the ball! Oh, beautiful! I tell you, this Anthony Carter is something else again. The Wolverines put the cork on the Little Brown Jug 37 to 14. The aerial minded Lion Eye from Champaign Urbana are here to do battle with the Pasadena bound Michigan Wolverines. And football fans, I say Pasadena bound advisedly. The 15 to 30. The 25 to 20 to 15 to 10. 15 to 1. 4 2 4. Electrify Michigan routed Indiana 35 to 0. The next week, Michigan cleanly beat Wisconsin 24 to nothing. You know, it's my firm belief right now that this Michigan team of 1980 is a team of destiny. This week they moved up to 12th in both polls. And I'm going to make a flat-out prediction right now. And I'll say that come the night of January 1st of 1981, this Cinderella band of Wolverines will give old General Bo his first bowl game victory. Touchdown, Carter! <laughs> Everything's coming up maize and blue, or should I say, is it premature to say everything's coming up roses? And remember, in the beginning of the year, everyone said the defense is inexperienced. They aren't too talented. Well, these youngsters have come back, and they have visualized themselves like the United States hockey team. And the defense considers this game as the American hockey game with Russia. Michigan walked off the field with a 26-0 victory over Purdue, the third shutout in a row. And then the annual showdown in Columbus. And I tell you, these Wolverines can smell those roses. They can smell old Darth Vader, Bruce, and his scarlet and gray stormtroopers. You better guard your loins, you Buckeyes, because the Wolverines are coming down there. We're coming down to Columbus, Ohio, with fire in our eyes. Wangler throws downfield, and it's caught by Kyrie! Kyrie to Fleister needs 25 yards. Fleister's being rushed. He's hitting stop, and it is Michigan's ball game. The Wolverines take over, and they are just 13 seconds away from the sniffing of roses. The roses in Pasadena, California. 10, 9, 2, 1. That's all there is. There isn't any more. Look at those Wolverines. They have the Rose Bowl bid. Another crack at the Pasadena Classic for Michigan. And so everything came up roses for Bo and Michigan. They flew off to Pasadena, having just wrapped up their ninth victory of the season and their ninth Big Ten championship under old General Bo. The Wolverines moved into Pasadena not only with nine straight victories, but they had just played four and a half games or 18 straight quarters of football without having a touchdown scored against them. Coach Lloyd Carr. My most memorable uh, recollection of Bob was in 1980. Uh, we we won the Big Ten championship. It was my first season at Michigan, and we went out to Pasadena. And uh, I think it was uh, the day before the game. Uh, we were playing Washington, and uh, of course, uh, Bo had yet to win a Rose Bowl game, and uh, so we had a pep rally. And uh, Bob Ufer, I think, really. Uh, inspired the Michigan team that day. I know he inspired me, and, and uh, he left no doubt that uh, we were going to win, that uh, we had to win for uh, all of the faithful Michigan uh, people. And uh, I, I just will never forget uh, his speech that day uh, at the pep rally. 
Then on December 31st at their Citrus College practice field, the Wolverines greeted 5,000 diehard Michigan fans who had assembled to spur their team on to victory in the Pasadena Classic the next afternoon. And as the band played the victors, Bob Eufer stepped up to the microphone. He turned to the team, and he delivered perhaps the most impassioned speech of his life. Right now, I'm going to change hats for a moment. I'm going to take off the hat of Bob Eufer, the voice of Michigan football, and I'm going to put on the hat of Bob Eufer, the end man. And I'm going to talk to another group of end men, these Michigan players, and a fine group of football athletes. They've done it all down through the years. And I guess you guys know that this old reporter I know this great University of Michigan. I love football, and I think you fellas are something special. You know why? Because to me, you exemplify what Michigan athletes and Michigan athletes are all about. You not only have class, but you have met adversity individually, and met adversity and conquered it, so that you could be out and play on this great 1980 football team. And as a team, you come together with a cohesiveness, a straight core, and you have overcome adversities, a lot of them. And you won a championship that everybody said you couldn't do. And you know what you're going to do tomorrow? You're going to get the finest coach in America in his first ball game. That's what you're going to do tomorrow. <laughs> I know we've been 15 year reunions. And I've been to a lot of these reunions. You're going to have some. But there's one underlying thing characteristic of all these championship teams. There's always one thing that they'll never forget and they'll always remember. And you will have the same situation after that game tomorrow. A lot of you guys are too young to remember Roy Shepard's team in 1969. Jimmy Beck's had a coach about it. And he played the Ohio State team. It was right by some. This is why I see you out here in the history of Olympic football. They had won 22 games in a row, fellas. They hadn't lost a game in two years. And they upset Ohio that day, 24 years ago. But you know what that 1969 team will never forget and always remember? They rose for a day over here in Pasadena that morning. Their coach, your coach, had a heart attack. That afternoon, they'll never forget that score. Southern California 10, Michigan 3. Two years later, 1971, Michigan had another great championship team. Well, I don't know, I'm beating on five. They won it all that year. They were the coach of the football world. You know what that 1971 team will never forget, Mom? You remember? Their Rose Bowl game. Stanford 13, Michigan 12, 1976. That was a great football team, a great championship team. They blew a great Ohio State team and Woody Hayes right out of Columbus, 22 to nothing. But do you know what that team in 1976 will never forget and always remember? Their Rose Bowl game over here, Southern Cal 14, Michigan 6, 1977. They whipped the Buckeyes that day, 14 to 6. You know what they'll never forget, what they'll always remember? Washington 27, Michigan 20. 1978, they went down to Ohio State and whipped the Buckeyes 14 to 3. But you know what they'll never forget, what they'll always remember? Southern California and the Phantom touchdown 17, Michigan 10. Now 1980, you fellas have done it all. You've won it, you've beaten Purdue on TV, you've beaten Ohio State on TV, you've won the big ones, haven't you? You've done it all. Fellas, I've been around long enough and you've been around long enough to know what I mean when I say they wrap fish in yesterday's newspaper. What you did last fall, I want you to search your soul right now and ask each one of yourselves, how significant is what you did last fall gonna be if you don't win that ball game tomorrow? You're gonna win that ball game, you got it? And when you win it, not if you win it, when you win it, you're gonna be able to say something that no Schumbeckler team has ever been able to say in the past, no Schumbeckler team will ever say in the future. You're gonna be able to say that you gave one of the greatest coaches in the history of intercollegiate football his first bowl victory. You're going to win that ball game tomorrow. You're going to win it for Bo. You're going to win it for Michigan. You're going to win it for the team with the winningest tradition in the history of Big Ten football. You're going to win it for the second prestige of the Big Ten. You're also going to win it for the school that has the largest living alumni body in the world. Over 300,000 of them, and they're all going to be behind you tomorrow. And you know, most of all, you're going to win it for yourselves. You're going to prove to yourselves that Notre Dame and South Carolina were flukes. And when you walk out of that stadium tomorrow afternoon with victory ringing in your ears, you're going to know that you could have been 12-0 in the season. And better yet, you're going to know down deep because you have just shown 45 million on TV along with 100,000 over there that you are indeed the finest football team in America today. Fellas, I ask you from this point on, think victory, beat Washington. You've got 60 minutes of football and a lifetime to remember.
and for me, you will remember tomorrow's day in the It is January 1st, 1981. Of course, Bob delivers that great broadcast, but he also proves to be quite a prophet. The game was classic, and it began with plays like this. The Wolverines trail in the ball game three to nothing, and we're just getting itchy, itchy, itchy to blow this boat. George Patton, Jim Beckler scoring horn in a Rose Bowl for the first time in 1981. Two tight ends, Betts and Dunaway. It's a balanced line. Wolf hook deep and Edwards close. Wide to the left is Carter. Wangler's taking plenty of time under center, and then he hands off to Butch again. Butch cuts back in, and he's down to the 4-3-2. And he picks up his first touchdown of this Rose Bowl game. Then this. There's Wangler under center, a quarterback looking in an eight-man front. He's going to give it to Edwards again. Edwards does it, I think. He does it, and Wangler completes the vendetta. You're going to win that ball game tomorrow. He left no doubt that we were going to win, that we had to win. And we did the next day. You're going to win it for Bo. You're going to win it for Michigan. No, sir, I don't believe he made it. And Michigan held. Michigan held. They held at the six-yard line. McCartney's monsters did it. You're going to win it for the team with the winningest tradition in the history of Big Ten football. Play action pass. It's thrown over the middle. Fire out. Oh, God, this is God. Sick of days of Bo Michigan heart. And you know, most of all, you're going to win it for yourself. You are the the finest football team in America today. Five, four, three, two, one. That's all there is. There isn't any more. And the final score again, Michigan 23, Washington 6. 12 long years of waiting, 12 long years of pain. They came, they saw, they conquered. Both won the year's last game. The Rose Bowl game of 81, and fans will long remember. This win will leave a taste so sweet right through till next September. Yes, the Reeser football fans, a great big Michigan victory in the fabulous granddaddy of all ball games, the Pasadena Rose Bowl. And so ends a very happy chapter in Michigan football history. The cardiac kids of September matured into the comeback kids of November. They rebounded after two early season losses to win eight straight regular season games. And they yielded no touchdowns to their opponents in their last five and a half outings. They won it all, the Ohio State game, the Big Ten Championship, and the 1981 Rose Bowl. And having done so, it can now truly be said that they are the victors valiant and the champions of the West. Son Tom was on hand. And as the lights were going out in Pasadena, again I had the opportunity. I'm up there in a the box with Dad. This is 10 months before he passes away. And the crowd then, about 18,000 people, stood up again as one and started chanting, You for, you for, you for. And Dad stood up and, I, and basically raised his arms and saluted them. And those are very, very moving moments. Michigan 23, Washington 6, and listen to the band playing the greatest college fight song ever written in the background, the Michigan Victors. <laughs>